Ouais, ça c'est bon. I want to be the best, simple and plain. There's a choice that we have to make as people, as individuals. If you want to be great at something, there's a choice that you have to make. We all can be masters at our craft. But you have to make inherent sacrifices that come along with that. You know, people don't really understand how obsessed I am with winning. It's not, I don't care about anything else on the basketball court but winning. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really um, simple. It's like, whatever you're doing at that moment, is what you're doing at that moment. You know, it's like that's where the obsessiveness is having attention to detail for the action that you are performing at the time you're performing. And if you can have that kind of focus, you can't help but to have a certain level of obsession and attention to detail. Hey, Stephen, I'm 21, 17 years old, the hunger, the motivation, and the desire to be the best possible basketball player that I can be. Still waiting for a big smile out of you. You're up 2-0. That's the story. Are you not happy or you're only half happy or? Still to be happy about. You're up 2-0. Job's not finished. Job finished? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking about the next round. Mm -hmm. Already? Of course. You got at least five days. Did you not enjoy it just a little? I'm going to get close to the top of Mount Everest and just lay down and sleep for a week. If I got a fight to get you in the gym, that's a problem. That's a problem. You want players that are gym rats, players that want to be in the gym, that want to work. And then from there, you build on top of that. But if you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I want to deal with you. You're going to make me feel dumber. You know, <laughs> you're going to lower my level. I don't think so. You just go over there. <laughs> this guy is the best. How does that make you feel? I know you're kind of chuckling now because we can joke about it, but you're the best player in the nation for anybody in high school. That feels good. It's big confidence, but you have to keep moving on. I know a lot of guys who've been number one in the past years and it just, like, just fell off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So I have to keep working hard. Uh, hopefully everything will work out be number one in the future. So I'm going to continue to work hard. And uh, we as a team will continue to work hard as an organization the same way. We continue to push and push until we get back to that top. You start with where you want your game to be. What will make your game most unstoppable or hard to deal with. And now you work backwards from there. And you start building it one piece at a time, one move at a time, one counter at a time. So there's a lot. We flew back to LA that night and I got home. It's probably like three in the morning. And I went down to the high school, which is down the street from our house. And the janitor let me in the gym and I shot all day. All day. I mean, all day. And this was right after that playoff game. And um, I didn't leave the gym. I just kept shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and practicing and practicing. And uh, I got a chance to let out the steam of disappointing my teammates and millions of fans. I got a chance to let all that out instead of bottling it up and envision that moment over and over and over and over and over. That, that was a huge summer for me because I, I, I felt like everybody had written me off after those air balls. I was really excited when the schedule came out and I saw the whole Utah. I read a couple days ago where you wanted to slow down the pace of your workout routine. Is that because you're in hopes of possibly getting some preseason games in or you want to be healthy for the season opener? Well, I just try to listen to my body. You know, just kind of listen to it. We have a great staff here. And, uh, you know, we just work hand in hand and just listen to how, how my body feels and uh, just try to respond accordingly. Uh, we used to have an All-American camp that I used to go to. And, you know, at the time I first showed I was a sophomore. And um, one of the things I would do is while everybody would be at the cafeteria work, you know, eating and doing all sort of stuff, I'd just go back to the gym. I'd just go back to the gym. <laughs> I mean, They'd be resting, they'd be re and, and they'd see me leave. 
right? But now you're in a tough position because you're like, okay, I want to be like, I'm following the kid to go work right. out, but I know he's working, he's up early and he's doing all this wow. sort of stuff. And so that was my way of, sh of showing them, yeah, yeah, maybe from the suburbs, but you're not going to outwork me. Wow. And I'm mentally going to. Did someone teach you that? It was really seen to you have bonded and understand that. You know, if you want to get to that elite level, you really have to put in the work day in and day out. Well, with that, but I, I've worked extremely hard this summer to be able to play at a high level, uh, regardless of the minute. Right? If it's 30, if it's 48, I'm prepared to do whatever's necessary, and that's that's my job to do so. Anyway, my parents were were great. You know, growing up, you know, they instilled in me the importance of imagination, of curiosity, and understanding that okay, if you want to accomplish something. I'm not just going to sit here and say, yes, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, but you have to also put in the work to get there, right? So they taught me that at a really early age, man. And uh, when you grow up as a kid thinking that the world is your oyster, and all things are possible if you put in the work to do it, you, know, you grow up having that fundamental belief. One of your uh, high school friends said, uh, when I was partying, he was playing basketball. When I was waking up, Kobe was playing basketball before class. How would you describe your dedication to the sport even back then? Well, I, I tried to find a balance. I, I tried to do both. You know, I, I had a great deal of energy. So um, if there was a school party going on or something like that, you know, I'd, I'd play basketball for a few hours and I'd do what I had to do and have fun doing it. And then you know, I'd go to the party. And I'd show up and I'd have a good time and have fun. And I'd be up at five o'clock in the morning you know, working out, working out, and you know, training the next day. So I, I tried to try to do both. Forty point games, sixty point games in three quarters. So talk about what led up to the big monster eighty one point game. Well, it was you know a thousand makes a day in the summertime, you know, and going through things you know, just as I would during the game. So you know, I, I knew exactly where my positions were within the triangle, and where, where the shots were coming from. So everything that I did throughout the course of my training was literally simulating that. So it was all game shots. So when it came in the game, things were just automatic. Because I'd put my body through it before. You know, sometimes you get in the gym and you work out and you work on ball handling, you work on shooting, but none of it's really within a structure of what you will be doing in the game. Mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't like that. It was literally carbon copy of what I'd be doing. So it, by the time the season came around, it was all just muscle memory. I understand you know, there's different levels of focus and commitment to a craft. I, you know, I get that completely. Guys want to go out and have a good time. I get that completely. However, you're going to do that and you show up to work the next day, you better be ready. Right? If you're going to do that, you better come to practice and you better be ready to go. And if you're not, then I'm going to, I'm going to let you know. And, and I think the message was sent pretty, pretty clear. Rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. Yeah, yeah we're going to work hard. And that's what training camp's about. Preseason's about is working hard, getting in shape, getting in condition. And uh, not so much about the games, but just, you know, the game is just another way to kind of, you know, get your exercise, get your win, get your rhythm. Uh, so we're pushing it in practice all week. And, uh, you know, I need to focus on the game. Uh, you know, a lot of the credit goes to my wife, so not only putting up here, but supporting my work ethic. You know, because I work all day consistently, and she's supporting me, and, um, you know, a lot of credit goes to But it's, it's simple, like, if you do the math on this, right, like, if, you, if you're thinking about how often kids are playing, all right, I tell this to my, to my daughter, and my daughter's team as well that I coach. It's a simple thing of math. If you want to be a great player, if you play every single day, two, three hours, every single day, over the course of a year, how much better are you getting? Most kids will play maybe you know, an hour and a half, two days a week. Right. Put the math on that. It's not, it's, not going, it's not going to get it done. <laughs> it's not going to get it done. Right, so if you're obsessive, obsessive, obsessively training, two, three hours every single day, over a year, over two years. You're accelerating. You make quantum leaps, man. Just doing it. If I could work that hard every day, um, with the, being blessed with the physical tools that I have, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself from that day that I was gonna work that hard every single day, so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me, is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I lived that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. And that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but you know, if you live your life to just get better every single day, 
You do that for 20 years, and what do you have? The kids are running. They've been running for two hours. Running, running, running. This one kid misses the line by like half inch. No, it wasn't even half inch. He's like, not that much. <laughs> like, he misses the line. Him. Kobe's like, stop, 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 stop. We had to stop. We had to stop everything. And he's like, nobody gets shoes. And all these kids are like, oh, they're mad at the kid. They're yeah. like, touch the line. All you gotta do is touch the line. That's it. It's this much. Touch the line. And then. You know, Kobe's like, no, nobody, nobody gets shoes, you guys sit on the sideline. And then Kobe made this kid run suicides, which is another drill. Baseline, free throw line, baseline, half court, baseline, opposite free throw line, baseline, baseline, and back. Three in a row. Three times. <laughs> you had to run three of them. Yeah. But, but the, the best part was, the best part was, uh, the last one, Kobe ran with this kid. He ran with this kid. Okay. Yeah. It's awesome. We ran with this kid, and there's 1.1 mil, 1. 1 million people are watching online. Crazy. He ran with this kid. This kid was dry heating. He was about to die. Yeah. But you You're know, lucky he, he didn't die. No, he's, he wasn't. He wasn't going to die. <laughs> but but the, the important thing to understand is you can't, you can't shortchange yourself. Like you got, you're not cheating anybody but yourself. I mean, you're tired. You're literally this far away from the line. Why would you not go that extra to touch the line? Right, so if I let him get away with that, right, all of a sudden he starts maybe to cheat something over here, right, not give his best over here, not give his best over here. And as years go on, he's going to be extremely, he's not going to reach his full potential because he's been taking these little shortcuts that just add up, add up, add up, add up, add up. And you can't let that happen. Our, our job as teachers, as mentors, as inspirers, it's our responsibility to hold them accountable to those things. The pressure is a funny thing. You know, I always felt like the people that feel pressure are the people that cut corners or really didn't put the work in. If you know you've put in all the work, what is there to be nervous about? You've done it thousands of times before. You just go up here and do it one more time. Really a question of what side of the fence do you want to be on? <laughs> you know, do you want to be nervous in those situations or do you not want to be nervous in those situations? Do you want to look at pressure as a normal sport occurrence like breathing is to every single day of your life? Then you put in the work. And if you don't, that's on you. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. You always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport that me coming in at 17, I hated when like, my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow. Right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And, like, you know, <laughs> Nick Van Exel would come up and say, are you OK? I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Wow, are you okay? What the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that was that I was playing against. Because I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know. Well, because you just focus on the day that you're playing. I mean, it's as simple as that. Like wh whatever you're doing in that moment, that's what you're doing. That's your sole focus. So you don't think about. You know, I have to do this for another year, or I have to do this for another two months. Just think about that moment. What are you doing at that moment in time to focus on 100%? That happens to me, like when I'm running, when I'm working out, I'm, I'm running. I do a lot of work on the track. And I'm running, and I'm really tired. But the finish line is all the way on the other side. And if I look at where I have to run, I get even more tired. So what I do is I just look down. I just look down, I just look at my feet just moving. And then you ne the next thing you know, and I look up and I'm crossing the finish line. Well, 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 uh, sorry to digress for a sec, but how does an air ball feel good? I just want to you know. because you know what? I, I want to know that no, one. No, it's, right. not, it's a really good question, right. but you know, like sometimes you shoot the ball and you release it, and the trajectory feels good, your follow through is good, it's right there on target, it's in line, you're keeping the follow through up in the air, and then it goes short. Mm -hmm. But it feels good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like a shock to miss those sometimes. Now, after that experience, obviously that weighs very heavily on your mind, but ultimately, Kobe Bryant works on this game. Sha Shaquille O'Neal is right there in the house with you to begin with. Your game is elevated to another level. What did you do to get your game to that level specifically? For those out there, I mean, we got a whole bunch of basketball kids in the house. 
No, what did you well, do to get your game to that level? The prime example is uh, that I've, had, I've had a trainer, the same trainer, been training for the last 10 years, named mm -hmm. Joe Carbone. And after I shot those air balls, you know, I sat there and I, I thought, as soon as we got, got on the plane, went back to L.A. that night, he and I met, we went through the whole season, our training regimen. And the thing that we came down to was that you know, our conditioning program needed to be adapted. We needed to change it. All right, give it to me quick. What you do? And don't well, think we, I'm just we, listening just for the television show. All summer long, we worked on our conditioning with the track. We did Olympic lifts. We went out there on the basketball court. And we did that, those three things, in one day. And we did that all summer long. We broke them up in cycles. Uh, because at the end of the game, even though the shots felt good, the truth of the matter is, my legs were tired. I wasn't ready. And so, what am I going to have to do now to get ready so next time I'm in that position, I'm going to make those shots. Is that what you still do to this day? Oh, absolutely. I'm always asking why, you know, why didn't this work out? Okay, why did this work out? Mm -hmm. How can I make this better? How can I make that better? So I'm always asking those questions to improve. I think that's when the idea of understanding a long-term view became important. Because I wasn't going to catch these kids in a week. I wasn't going to catch them in a year. Right? So that's when I sat down and said, okay, this is going to take some thought. Right? What do I want to work on first? All right, shooting. All right, let's knock this out. Let's focus on this half a year, six months, do nothing but shoot. All right, after that, all right, creating your own shot. You need to focus. So you start, I started creating a menu of things. Mm. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. Right? A menu back, being like, I've got my jump shot from 15, I've got my Yeah, I got my jump away, shot from I've 15, my... I got my three-point shot, like just open shots, not miss open shots, right? Yeah. Be able to shoot it with speed, because those kids are so much more athletic. Yeah. And then the next summer I came back, it was a little better. When the summer came back, you the scored. next summer it was a little better. I scored. Yeah, you know, it wasn't much, right. but I scored. You this know? is 12, 13. 12, 13. And then 14 came around, back half of 13, 14 uh, years old, and then I was just killing everyone. And it happened in two years. And I wasn't expecting it to happen in two years, but it did because what I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. But they relied on their athleticism mm. and their natural ability. And because I stick to the fundamentals, it just caught up to me. And then my body, you know, my knees stopped hurting. I grew into my frame. And, and then your athleticism, once you have the fundamentals, exactly. the hard work, the mindset, and you tack on the athleticism, exactly. it's then, game then, over. Then it was game over. Wow. <laughs>